coffee. Not surprisingly, there's now a high-tech way to enjoy one of the world's oldest and simplest pleasures. It's called Ember, marketed as the world's first temperature control mug. For $80, you can get the 10-ounce standard mug or the 12-ounce travel mug. They look sleek and simple, but don't be deceived. Unpack the box and there's an electric charging coaster that you need to plug in and set the mug on to charge. On the standard mug, an indicator light blinks to tell you when your mug needs charging and when it's reached your desired temperature. On the travel mug, there's a hidden digital display that you reveal by tapping the logo. It tells you the battery level and current temperature of the mug's contents, and you can change the temperature by twisting the bottom of the mug. So I'm trying out the Travel Ember Mug for the first time. We're about two and a half hours into a road trip and it is still warm. It says it's at 122 degrees, which is great. I have found it a little hard to fiddle with the bottom base while I'm driving. And I also have found it really heavy to hold and drink at the same time. I also wish that this bottom base that's all the electric portion uh, could be filled with more tea for my long drive. And then, of course, there's an app. You use it to set the desired temperature of your mug and it alerts you once it's warm enough. But to get that peppy message and to control the temperature of your mug, you need to sign up for an account and agree to a lengthy privacy policy. Until this point, I was excited about the prospect of the perfect temperature tea, but allowing a company to track my location and browsing activity just to keep my drink warm seems like overkill. Some of this data collection allows Ember to communicate with the Apple Health app, presumably to track your daily caffeine intake. It does that by keeping tabs on how often you set the mug to your temperature presets. You set these up for your favorite drinks by entering everything. The brand of beans or tea leaves, the style of drink, think cappuccino, espresso, black tea or herbal, how much creamer you add, and your desired temperature. I was disappointed when the automatic recommended temperature for every drink was 135 degrees, which meant I had to separately look up what temperature to brew my different varieties of loose leaf tea. I expected that feature to be included on an app that's made for people willing to buy an $80 mug because they're particular about the exact temperature of their drink. There is a tea timer on the app, so you can remember to take your tea out at the proper time. Three minutes for green, five for black, six for herbal, but even those times are very generic and don't account for different varieties. Plus, doesn't everyone have a timer on their phone or watch already? Once I finally got my presets working, I did find pleasure in taking my sweet time to enjoy my favorite teas at their proper temperature without the rush to drink them before they got cold. But it simply took way too long to get there. My joy was undercut by all the hassle of prepping the mug to work as intended. And no, I do not care about personalizing my mug by naming it in the app and choosing what color it blinks when it's warm. Sometimes I just want my pleasures in life to stay simple. Plop down on the couch, flip to whatever's on TV, pour my coffee, drink it, throw the mug in the dishwasher. For me, having to plug in my coffee takes away some of the appeal. Coffee is my morning me time, a moment to not be stressed out before the day gets hectic. But what if I forgot to charge my Ember? Do I really need that software update if I want my coffee warm? What if I don't have time to hand wash it before I catch the bus? Not only are the mugs hand wash only, but when I took out the charging coaster, there was a warning. Dry it well, water can cause damage to the coaster. Isn't a coaster created to protect other surfaces from liquid? There was also that one time at a bar where I smelled something burning and I panicked for a minute because I thought I left my Ember travel mug on in my purse. But there are also days where this product makes a lot of sense, especially to keep at the office. Those busy days where I won't be able to leave my desk for a refill and will need hot coffee to fuel me for hours. But for those times, I wish Ember came in bigger sizes and I wish it would heat drinks on its own rather than just keep them warm or at least keep drinks warm for longer. It's advertised to stay warm for just one hour when off the charging coaster. After all, low-tech insulated bottles by companies like Yeti and Swell need no power and keep drinks hot for hours and come in a lot more sizes and colors and can be dishwashed and don't cost $80. Or actually, for this copper edition, it's $130. There's one person in my life, though, who I thought Ember might be perfect for. Oh. My mom. Does it go on? <laughs> She's in her 60s, she likes her coffee in a traditional mug, and she needs it, hot and ready, every morning. And I have mobility issues, so this way I can just sit at the table, eating my breakfast, eating the newspaper or my phone, and keep the coffee hot. My verdict? 
Ember is an expensive but useful solution for the office when you don't want to break focus by refilling your coffee, or it's a kitschy gift for that gadget-loving friend or mom who loves coffee or tea. But at the end of the day, or should I say beginning, it adds too much stress to my routine to be a good everyday solution.